All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's topic of discussion is pretty important. You may or may not know, but something is approaching next year that I like to refer to as the Xbox 360 apocalypse, where Microsoft, not too long ago, announced that they will be shuttering and closing the digital storefront for Xbox 360 games. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but Pete, I don't buy digital games. I don't care about the arcade games that are on there. It's fine, but you really should be worried because... You have my word, this will greatly impact the price of physical games, even physical games that have nothing to do with the digital marketplace. This is not a video that's going to make you get all crazy with FOMO and start buying... Spe I'm not going to be really naming specific games here. I'm not going to be holding up games and be like, go buy this game before it's too late. But I am going to show you guys some examples and break it down for you as to what you need to look out for. Which games are going to go up in price, but are definitely going to come back down. What types of games. What games are going to go up and come down, but are going to definitely see a price increase for the foreseeable future and what kind of games are going to go up and may not ever come back down again so I've got a lot of examples for that kind of stuff for you guys as well as comparing it to what happened when Sony announced the PSN closure for stuff like the PlayStation 3 back in April of 2021 and how that kind of affected the market so we're going to take a smart look at this. I'm going to break it down for you guys and let you know everything that you can expect as to how and when and what you need to look out for when this 360 apocalypse starts happening next year or whenever it decides to start occurring. But before we begin, if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button because this is what we do here on my channel. We have a lot of these sort of sit down discussions when it comes to the collecting side of the video game market and all kinds of fun stuff. So if you enjoy in-depth, deep dives on stuff like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And welcome to the channel. So I'm going to swap over here real quick for you guys. Um, actually, before we do that, let's talk about this a bit. So how how is it that Xbox 360 physical games that have nothing to do with the digital marketplace will be impacted? Well, that's just because when the time draws near, right now there's not a lot of people making videos on YouTube, right? Because you'll have a few people that are like, hey, these are some of the best games you need to get before the 360 store closes, but a lot of people procrastinate. Let's all be real, real here. Most of us are not going to do anything until the final week or the final days when we start procrastinating for the next year, and then we start panicking in the last week or two, and then we start buying all the games that we want physically. Um, even digitally, of course, but a lot of us are going to wait until the last minute, and so do a lot of video makers. Content creators know this. They're going to wait until that last, like, 30 days to kind of maximize on the FOMO effect, so you're not going to really see this astronomical rise and demand in prices for Xbox 360 games, essentially until it's too late, and then by the time you start seeing these videos, uh, prices are going to skyrocket, so I'm going to walk you through how to avoid that scenario and what to keep a lookout for in the next, like, eight to nine or ten months or so, but I'd say, you know, maybe closer to six or seven months is when you need to start planning. So what's going to happen here is people are going to make videos specifically about digital games that you don't want to miss out on, but this is going to have a residual effect that definitely bleeds into physical games because there's going to be this huge focus. I guarantee you that pretty much any channel that is focused on retro games or covering Xbox, Xbox 360, People are going to be putting out videos, I mean, I'll probably be doing it myself with some recommendations at some point, but we're not focused on that right now. But there's going to be this huge boom in channels that are recommending games, whether it be, even if it's just digital games, there's going to be such a laser focus on the 360 that you're going to have a ton of people that are like, man, I need to, I don't want to have what happened to the, the PS3, I need to get these 360 games now. And there are going to be people that are just buying physical games, even though they have no care in the world about digital games. You have my word on this, it's going to happen. So that's sort of why you're going to see physical game prices completely affected by the fact that just the digital storefront is closing down. Now, let me show you an example on this slide here uh, about what happened to PlayStation 3. So some of you probably remember it was a pretty big deal at the time in April of 2021, Sony announced that they were going to be closing the PSN store and people went nuts. People went crazy. So as you can see, in April 2021, Folklore, a game that used to be about $20 to $30, even after 2020 pricing, right? Look at this, 2020, you know, a lot of games kind of saw a pretty crazy increase in 2020. No, nah, Folklore, for the most part, was unaffected. But oh my goodness, Sony's closing the digital storefront, even though Folklore is just, you know, it's not a digital exclusive, it's just a, a pretty decent, pretty good uh, exclusive for the PlayStation 3. Look at this. It goes from $30 to $90. That is insane for a price increase. But then what happens? Sony says, oh, wait, we're not 
we're not actually going to close the storefront. We heard you. We're going to wait. We're not, we're not going to close it. So the price on Folklore comes down. However, as you can see, the cheapest it ever starts to achieve is about $40, is, is as cheap as it gets. Right now, it's kind of sitting around the $50 mark. So it is a notable price decrease. But the thing is, now that all this attention has been placed onto the exclusives in the PS3 library, almost all of the games are now permanently increased in price just because the market had such a huge boom and spike. So my advice on this is, yes, games will go up in value, but if you're the type of person where maybe you can't afford or maybe you forget to get these games before it's too late, do not pay these crazy prices for the first year. Wait about 6 months to 12 months, and as you will see, the prices will come back down, but they will never be the same. And this is true, this is going to be true for any Xbox 360 exclusives. Anything that you can only get on an Xbox 360, whether or not it's on the digital storefront or not, um, heck, it's it's going to see a price increase. Probably you're going to see it spike most games uh, at least 100% in price, and then they will probably the price afterwards will come back down by about 50%. Another example here is 3D Dot Game Heroes once again, a game that was similar to Folklore, kind of sitting around the 20 to 30 dollar range even during the pandemic pricing, and then all of a sudden they announced the store's closing. It goes from 30 to almost 80 dollars, and then similar to Folklore, as you can see. Hype dies down, people kind of get their copies, The peop everybody that you know was fearing of missing out on this game uh, got their copies, and then it kind of stabilizes, but price is permanently increased. Now, let me show you a polar opposite of what will happen to a lot of 360 games. We have an instance here with Ridge Racer 6, where prices will go up, but then they will almost stabilize back down to where they originally began. Now, this is a game that I use in an, as an example in my streams when I was discussing this with people. What happened here with Ridge Racer 6, the game was added to the backwards compatibility list, so that means that instead of having to play this game on a 360, you are now able to play it on your Xbox One, Xbox Series X, whatever have you. And then people panicked. They're like, oh my goodness, I need to get Ridge Racer 6. But you're probably like, okay, so what happened here? Why did the price come back down? That's because Ridge Racer 6 is not a rare game. And this is the one, like one of the biggest pieces of advice I have for you is whether you're going to do it now or after, do not buy any 360 games for increased prices around this like sort of panic closure mode um, until it dies down. So what you should do if there's a game you're interested in buying and maybe you can't get it right now, or just in general, check eBay. And if a game has, say, at least 50, 30, 40, 50 copies available at any given point, you see them in lots all the time. In the case of Ridge Racer 6, this is a common game. There's always tons of these available on eBay. So any game that has a lot available, you've always remembered seeing it in bargain bins and everything, chances are that game, it is absolutely going to go up in price, like Ridge Racer 6 will probably see a bit of a price increase again during the 360 apocalypse, but it will come back down. So as you can see here, it used to be about a $9, $10 game. It had that huge boom because of the panic. Everybody's making videos about, you know, the new uh, games getting added to the backwards compatibility list. The copies dry up, but there's so many copies of the Ridge Racer 6 in circulation. Over time, it kind of stabilizes it back down to just slightly above what the price of Ridge Racer 6 has been for many, many, many years. So... Keep an eye out. Don't go crazy on any common games. They're not going to suddenly disappear overnight. But now let me show you an example. This is a game that I have not played, but I do think it is a good example on 360 of a game that was sort of a sleeper, kind of low-cost game for a long time. And then it was affected by pandemic pricing a bit, as you can see here. It kind of almost doubled in price. And then you get the backwards compatibility addition to this game. It goes up to almost $120. But then when the hype dies down... And people realize that, you know, it, it's an uncommon game, but it's not like super rare or anything. The price comes back down, but it is way more expensive than it used to be. And I think this is a good example because I think this is what's going to happen to most Xbox 360 games when this price increase, the 360 apocalypse happens. Because there are a lot of 360 exclusives that kind of fall into this 50 cent blood in the sand category where it's not a super common game. It's not a rare game. It's uncommon. And there's not always a plethora of these to go around, but generally anytime you check online, there's going to be a good handful of copies. So when the supply starts drying up for these, uh, when the store closure gets more imminent, you will see a price increase on this. But I don't think you're going to see it kind of go back up to these $120 prices. However, I do believe that when the apocalypse happens, 
you're going to see this game going from being about $60, $70. And I do think it's going to kind of get in a midway point between 120 and 180. It'll probably go up to be like a $180, uh, sorry, an $80 game. It will see sort of that after effect of this uh, new focus of attention on the 360 library. Now, I don't mean to show this game to like make you all scared and go buy a bunch because it is, you know, a fairly common uncommon game but i think this is going to be a good example of what i'm talking about here so beautiful katamari is to this day still 100 percent exclusive to the xbox 360 um, you can't get this anywhere else uh, they are known for porting a lot of katamari games and who knows maybe in the next year we'll actually see a port of this which would be awesome because beautiful katamari is amazing it's one of my favorites in the series of the ones i played at least um, but this is a perfect example of a game that's kind of had a very stable price for many years, had a little bit of a price increase here at some point, but it's been pretty stable, right? But this is what you need to look out for. You need to look out for these games that are sort of in this 20 to 25, maybe $30 price bracket, because what does that mean? The game is not common enough to be a $10 game. It's uncommon enough and desirable enough with a fan base to sort of fall in that $20 to $30 range. I call these like the sneaky 360 games. Any 360 game that you see on the used market going for between $20 to $30 or $35, you need to keep an eagle hawk eye on because those are the games that are going to go crazy because the price that they're at right now is not exactly super cheap. It's not expensive. It's like that mid-tier pricing that will absolutely go crazy because there's apparently enough of a demand and fan base to have these prices as it is and a scarcity of the game in general to kind of have these types of prices and especially a game like beautiful katamari that is backwards compatible uh, this is like all three all the areas that you can think of to kind of be a game that is probably going to get it's i can foresee this game and i'm once again i'm just using this as an example not like making you all go buy a copy of katamari damasi but if you do i have an ebay affiliate link in the, in the description below i appreciate it if you use it but that's not my intention here uh it's it's just a game that I can absolutely foresee if no reprint of this is made or re-released. This will be $40, $50, $60 easy. It will see a price decrease afterwards after the hype dies down, but this will no longer be a $15, $20 game. It's probably permanently going to raise up to a $35, $40 or more in the future once you know you have this huge wave of people coming in. A couple more examples for you guys. Once again, not meaning to make you panic on these games, just kind of using these as uh, good examples of what I'm talking about here. A game like Lost Odyssey, exclusive. As you can see, it's had a lot of price bumps and hills and things along the way. I'm not sure what happened here in October of 2016 for it to go up to $30. It's pretty interesting. Probably got highlighted in a YouTube video or something. But as you can see here, it's kind of had a rocky road, and it seems to have settled very calmly around this 20 ish dollar mark. But here's the thing. Lost Odyssey is one of those mid-tier 20 25 ish dollar games. It's exclusive to 360 seems unlikely to ever get released it's backwards compatible it's an rpg that's a huge deal the 360 rpgs i think are just sleeping giants and lost odyssey kind of harkens back to a time where people crave these kind of final fantasy-esque rpgs in a lot of people's minds and in my mind as well this was sort of like an unofficial final fantasy game at least in my opinion so this is the kind of game where it, it's like Final Fantasy VII. How is Final Fantasy VII still going for $40, $50 in some instances on PS1, despite how many copies exist out there? It's because there's, there's a big demand, there's a big fan base. Now, does Lost Odyssey have a fan base like Final Fantasy VII? It does not, but it also didn't have a print run like Final Fantasy VII. So I think the print run of Lost Odyssey is in line with sort of like how many fans exist out there for it, and especially fans that have not discovered the game as of yet, and they know that they'll love it. I absolutely see the price of Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon going up in price when this price increase apocalypse happens. So not to make you panic, but I would keep your eyes out for a copy of Lost Odyssey over the next eight months or so and try and get a copy while you can at reasonable prices because you have my word. You may potentially regret it if you wait too long on that and other 360 RPGs. Now, Blue Dragon is an interesting one because unlike Lost Odyssey here, which has kind of been all over the place and like gradual increases, nothing crazy. Blue Dragon has been on a steady increase now since since the pandemic, and it's not showing any signs of slowing down, which is interesting because most games during 2020 saw a huge price increase and then they kind of dipped back down. Blue Dragon did not see that decline again back down to the $10 where it used to be. If anything, lately it's been going for uh, almost $30 in some instances here, it seems. Uh, but as of right now, it's kind of like $20, $25. 
Now, same thing as Lost Odyssey, this kind of falls into the same category. Just an example of what you need to be looking out for. Exclusive, backwards compatible, an RPG, a cult classic for many people. It's spelling of disaster if you wait too long on a game like this. And this can apply to other genres, not just RPGs. You need to keep a lookout for any kind of anime style, uh, Japanese developed, niche, weird, strange little games. Um, that just seem to kind of have a small fan base, but believe me, the fan base and the collectors that are out there now trying to get these games that we just seemingly don't get anymore, those sort of like 360 PS3 era action hack and slash beat em up style games that are just so hard to get these days that kind of replicate that nice simplistic era of action adventure games. Those are the ones you need to keep a lookout. And if you guys ever want me to make a video, I'm sure I'll get around to it at some point. Please leave a like, let me know that you found this video helpful, leave a comment. And I will be sure to, at some point, not too soon, not too late, I'll make a video with some of my recommendations on what you guys should be keeping a lookout for. Maybe I'll do it sooner rather than later to kind of get ahead of the curve here so you guys actually have a chance to try and get some of those games uh, before it's too late. I don't have any kind of crazy impact on this kind of stuff like some people do on YouTube. So sure, I you know if I make a video like this, yeah, some games might you know start having a bit of a hard time buying them on eBay, but that'll clear right up in no time. So... That's one of the advantages you have here being subscribed to me on this channel. It's not like when I make a video like that and you miss it by a few hours, all the games are going to be sold out already. You'll get a chance, at least by watching my recommendations. Anyway, thanks so much guys for watching. I didn't want this video to be too long. Like I said, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy these kind of discussions, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.